It's 22A of the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Rabbi Yudhaimer, Imaya Derek Rishus Rabbi Mapsakasin, so can let's start them. Talking about the Pasi Birois, the well that has the the corners around it. Now, there really is no, uh, are no walls there. It's just um, uh, halachic walls. So it's it's open. Now, we said that you're allowed to make it larger and larger and larger as long as you put in um, slats in the middle or whatever. Let's say you made it large to the extent that you cross the street. And it's possible for a street to be running through this area where there's a well there. So Rabbi Yehuda says, that's it, that doesn't work. If you have the street going through it, so you're trying to create a wall, a halachic wall, you can't create a halachic wall if the street is running through it. It's, it's, a, it's like a joke. It's not, there's no wall there. There's, there's a street going through it. The expression is... The public come and nullify the mechitza because the public are walking through it. Chacham and Maimrim in the Tzarechom say, no, it's not a problem. It's not a problem if the, uh, if the public is walking through. Okay, Rabbi Yechon and Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Yechon and Rabbi Lazar were in Eretz Yisrael. They were Chavrusas at one point after Rish Lakish died. Otherwise, I think Rabbi Lazar was considered a student. Amri Tarvayu, they both said, Here we see the power of the mechitzas. Mechitzas, the partitions, are so strong that even when the public is walking through them, they still exist. They're not even real mechitzas, but it's as if they're mechitzas. See, the public doesn't nullify the mechitzas based on the opinion of the Chachamim, not Rabbi Hud, of course. So, the question is, when he said, when they said that, did they also mean that that's the halacha? That means they're passing like the chachamim. But Rabbi Barbarchanan said in the name of Rabbi Yechanan, and Rabbi Yechanan was one of the people before that said that statement. He says, Yerushalayim, regarding the city of Yerushalayim, if not for the fact that the walls close at night, then carrying in Yerushalayim would be a public domain. Okay. Why is it a public domain? It has walls around it. The reason is because the public walks through it and those walls are nothing. Which means the public that's walking through to what the, the gates in the wall and the wide gates nullify the mechitza. It's not considered closed because the public ruins it. If you add doors, that's a different story. So what does that mean? Rabbi Yechonon holds Asi Rabbi Mamavat Mechitza. Which opinion is that? That's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. That's the statement of Rabbi Barbachan and name of Rabbi Yechonon. The statement before was that Rabbi Yechon and Rabbi Lazar hold like the Chachamim that lo yasi Rabbi Mavat Lemechitzah. Kan edyecha koyfin shal mechitzas. The mechitzas exist even if the public is walking through it. There's a contradiction in the statements of Rabbi Yechon. Will the mechitzas exist when the public is walking through? Ela kan v'le svirle. We have a simple answer. He says, from the opinion of the Rabbanan, we see the power of mechitzas, even though we don't pass them like we pass in like Rabbi Huda, that the mechitzas become nullified. But you just look at what the rabbis say. So that's how it would be learned. Now the Gemara asks a very interesting question. There's a contradiction here. Rami de Rabbi Huda ad Rabbi Huda, Rami de Rabbanan ad Rabbanan. It's a contradiction in the opinion of Rabbi Huda, and there's a contradiction of the opinion of the rabbis. One of these cases uh, that you'll remember. So. Opinions. It says like this. It's the Tanya. I thought it was. A, I thought it was a Mishnah. 
Does anyone have a different year set that is supposed to be the, the, the Tanan? Mine says the Tanya. Without any corrections. I thought this was a, I thought it was a Mishnah. At least that's what I remembered. The Tanya was taught in a, in a Brisa. That's what it says. Yes, sir. Can, tell me again. We, we have a note about that here. Oh, really? Rabbi Yehuda ruled in the Mishnah 95a that a Roshusa Rabin straddled by two houses is rendered a Roshusa Yachin by a roof life structure over it. This Brysa notes that in addition, oh, Rabbi Yehuda okay. ruled. Yeah, okay. okay, so the basic halacha was the Mishnah, and then the Brysa adds on to it. Uh-huh. So the Brysa says like this Yes, Rabbi Yehuda, but Rabbi Yehuda said even more than that. The Mishnah said, Mishnah Daniel. The Mishnah said that if you have two houses, a person owns two houses, on uh, one on each side of the Rosh Hashanah, so, and he makes an overpass. So underneath the overpass is considered a Rosh Hashanah according to Rabbi Huda. The Brisa adds, yes, sir, okay, even more than, than that, even if you don't make an overpass, what do you do? I said, you don't even need, need to make an overpass. You just have to make a lechi. Lechi was a side post on both sides. Or a kaira, which is a crossbeam across the street. The nice of a nice bamsa. And you can carry in, in the middle. That's a little bit of an issue, according to Rabbi Huda. Because you have the public that's walking through your fictitious wall. And what are we saying? That the public is meaningless. It's considered a vishasayachid. Now look at, take a look at our Mishnah that we just learned. You have the public that's walking through this another fictitious wall. It's the, the Pasi Birais. And we say, oh, that's a big problem. The public is going to nullify the Mechitza. It's a clear contradiction in the opinion of Rabbi Huda. Over there, the public did not nullify the Mechitza. It was considered Rosh Hashanah in the Rosh Hashanah itself. And over here, we're saying, no, it's a huge problem. You have to move it to the side. The public is going to nullify. Amrulai, now that here's the problem with the rabbis, the sages' opinion. They said, It's still considered a Rosh Hashanah. You can't make an, you can't turn a Rosh Hashanah into Rosh Hashanah just by those um, overpass or, or posts. Now, um, that's a contradiction in the rabbi's opinion, because the rabbi said that when you have the Pasi Birais, the, these corners that are um, around the well, even if there's a street going through that area, it's still considered a Rosh Hashanah. It comes to Rabbi Yehuda's case with the overpass, over there, it's considered a Rosh Hashanah because the public's walking down. So, do they hold that the public nullifies the Mechitzas or not? By the Pasperais, obviously not. And by Rabbi Huda's case, in the case on, in Masech the Shabbos, it, it did nullify. Okay. Two contradictions. The Gemara says, Kasha de Rabbi Huda, the Rabbi Huda, Kasha de Rabbanan, the Rabbanan. It's a contradiction in both opinions. Sometimes when these things get so difficult, the Gemara says, oh, switch the Mishnah around. And then the Gemara says, oh, well, which one should we switch? Should we switch this one and switch that one? And then that, here we have other answers that we don't have to go, go to that. So it's Rabbi Yudha, Rabbi Yudha, like Kasha. There's no question on Rabbi Yudha. Why? Hasam de Kashtei Mechitzus Malaisa. Over there, you actually have two walls. Two walls, according to Rabbi Yehuda, could make her a Yeah, rabbinically, you have to put up these posts and all of that. But you have a real Rosh Hashayafet. You have Rosh Hashayafet Manatayah. Because you have two walls on the sides of the street, which is the outer walls of his two houses. Over here, over here, you don't even have two walls. Your whole, your whole um, partition, your whole fence is all made out of these corners. The whole thing is just the halachic wall. There is no, so the public will nullify that. But over there, you really have the two walls, yes. 
I, I'm confused as to the subject of this Mishnah. Is this still discussing the well that's used for Ola Harego? Because all of a sudden yeah. we're talking about something in a city with walls. Yeah. Yeah. So it must be, um, it must be that it's a public area. There's a well. I don't know if it's a city or outside the city or, um, and there's a path or a street that's running through the partition around the well. So, so the well's in the middle of a street? The well is, um, the well doesn't have to be in the middle of the street. The well could be on the side of the street, but the partition that the person built crosses the street. Uh -huh. Okay. So well, that's the problem. The problem is, is that the public area is running through this Public area is running through this. Let me pull up a, p a picture. Not like it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna do anything. But that's sometimes the visual. One second. Let's do. One second. Abi, do you know page run? So there. So share this. Yeah, so what we're looking at is, here's the street. Um, you have to move it to the side. That's what we're saying over here, that you have to move this area to the side so that the street doesn't walk through. That helps. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, we we answered the question, Rabbi Yehuda. There's when there's two real machitzes, it becomes your shaseyachid. We don't say the public is going to nullify the rabbinic third wall that they're trying to create because you already have your shaseyachid. When you the whole thing is is uh, doesn't have real machitzes, then the public will nullify that. What about according to the rabbis? Rabbis say that the case of Pasibiris is even better than the case of Rabbi Yehuda. Because by Pasibiris, I have an ama in each corner. That is considered a wall. In the case of Rabbi Yehuda, you have two walls granted, that's very nice. But your third and fourth wall are nothing. This is a Balachi or a Cairo, but that's not enough. So therefore, in that case, the, the Rabbim will be Mavatal the Mechitzis. But in the case of Rabbi Yehuda, and well, they were both Rabbi Yehuda, in the case of the Pasi Birais, uh, in our Mishnah, so you don't have, you don't have, uh, you, over there you have Taka four walls, so you don't have to move it to the side. Very small walls, but at least they're, they're walls. I'm a Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Yosef. I'm Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Yosef said in the name of Rabbi Yechanan, "Eretz Yisrael ain't chayav and alav mishum shasarabim." Israel is not uh, is not a shasarabim. You're not chayav in the land of Israel. It's for shasarabim. Okay, who said this? Rabbi Yitzchak Bar Yosef in the name of Rabbi Yechanan. Yosef Rabbi Dimi v'kamal alashmat. Rabbi Dimi said that over. I'm a leibayla Rabbi Dimi. I says to Rabbi Dimi. My time. What's the what's uh, what's the reason? Israel is not a uh, Rishas Rabbim. Ilan Mishin de Makif la Sulma de Tsur, Mihach Gisa, Machtana de Godar Mihach Gisa. Is it because you have the cliffs, it's called the ladder of 
of Tyre, of Tzur, which in Steinsaltz it says that that's the uh, Reisha Nikra. It's an area in the north where you have the um, cliffs. And on one side, okay, we've learned about using cliffs. And you have the slopes of Godar, which is on the eastern side of the Yarding. Rashi tells us, on, on the other side. So you're sort of like surrounded by these natural barriers. He says, if that's the case, then Bavel Nami, then let's go to Babylonia as well. And what's over there? Makif Lapras Mihach Gisa, you have the Euphrates on one side. The Diglas is, the, um, is the, uh, the Tigris, the Tigris River. It sounds like Tigris, Diglas. Uh, it's called the Chidekel, Chidekel in Hebrew. Mehag <coughs> on the other side, it's right, this is uh, between the rivers. So you have uh, natural barriers uh, there. And now the Gemara goes on, it says, to Kuliyal Manami Makavukiyanis. But one second, the whole world is surrounded by water. How did they know that back then? <laughs> so, um, so. But that, that Chassid, he learned in a Maimer that three quarters of the world is, uh, is water. He said, I don't understand. I was in St. Petersburg. I was in uh, some other city over there uh, in Russia. So I didn't see so much water. What is the lots of shot? So um, the whole world is surrounded by water. So if you say Eretz Yisrael has natural barriers, so what about, what about the whole world? Well, at least what about... Um, what about Bavo? So the Gemara says like this, it is a, a bias suggesting what's the pshat. He says, Dilma Milas and Mardis Kamit. Maybe you don't really mean the land of Israel is not a Rishisa, it was not a Rishisa Rabbi. Maybe you mean certain areas in Israel, the cliffs, the difficult passes, when it's going up, it's going down. Those areas are not considered a Rishisa Rabbi. They're difficult to get through. So, Amalei, Kakafna Chazise Lereshech Bein Amudei. Kakafna, Rashi says, means like important person. It's a funny word for an important person. It means skull. Um, uh, I guess it means like uh, intelligent one. It's, I saw your head between the pillars of the base Medrash when Rabbi Yechanan was saying this. In other words, that's exactly what Rabbi Yechanan said. It's as if you were there. Some interpret this that what it means is that your head means that Abaya learned by Rabba, and Rabba was by Rabbi Yechanan when he taught this. Now, I didn't know that. I didn't know that Rabba was by Rabbi Yechanan. But um, I know Rabbi Zeira went to Eretz Yisrael, Rabba and Rabbi Zeira. Anyway, uh, basically, Abaya got it correct. That's what uh, Rav Dimi is telling you. You got it right. That's actually what Rabbi Yechanan said. Kiyom uh, Rabbi Yechanan Shmaita, when Rabbi Yechanan said this. Was, you were there in the yeshiva when Rabbi Yechanan said this, as if. Okay, Itmar Nami, we have another statement that goes along with these lines. Kiyasu Ravin Amar Rabbi Yechanan, when Ravin came, he said the name of Rabbi Yechanan. There were two travelers here, Rav Dimi and Ravin, both brought statements from Eretz Yisrael to Babel. And Rabbi Yechanan said, he said, Some said that Rabbi Vo said the name of Rabbi Yechanan. I don't know if that Rabbi Vo was a traveler, but he said this over. Exactly that statement. That it's not the whole Israel is in the Rosh Hashanah. And it's the passes that uh, over the cliffs and then the hills. Those are not considered a Rosh Hashanah. Because... They're not flat like, like it was in the desert. In the desert, in the Digli Midbar means the, the, um, the flags, the banners that the Jewish people had in the desert. And as we learn, the areas of Shabbos from the areas that were in the desert, and in the desert they were flat and these, they were easy to pass through. And these um, cliffs and hills, those are more difficult. We, we just made a distinction between the land of Israel and, and Chutzlaretz which we didn't explain that reason yet. That, wait for the end of the Gemara. But um, definitely the difficult passes 
are going to be are going to be um, not considered shasarabim in Israel. Let's see if we have some pictures here that will summarize what we just went through. That was that was when we mentioned Yerushalayim. Here we saw Sulma the the uh, the um, the ladder of Tyre, which we said was Reisha Nikra. And we asked, what about the whole world? Oh, very nice. The whole world is surrounded by water. And we said that the water could be a, could be a mechitza. If it goes, if the, there's an incline in the, in the seawall. I saw that the Ritva asks, so why taka? Why isn't the, the water a mechitza? Ritva says that because when you're there, on dry land, you don't feel that you're surrounded by it. You need to be in an area that you recognize that you're enclosed. You don't recognize it like that fellow in St. Petersburg. Say, I don't know that there's water, uh, that uh, I'm surrounded by water. It needs to be recognizable that, that you feel that you're enclosed. Okay, this is gonna be our next, uh, next discussion. Rachva has a question from Rabba. Tell him a slacket, a saramitechaba. Tell him a slacket. Tell him a slacket is the mound that if you measure the, the, um, the incline, the distance, the um, uh, say the the uh, the vertical line, the uh, the x axis is um, is four amas, and the the y is ten tefachim. So, or it's the the x is within four amas. That's so. Then tell him it's like a sermon. Take her by rabbin by kim by. Chayavim lo mishum shes rabbin ma yen chayavim yen chayavim lo. We mentioned in the Mishnah that if the public walk through the corners of the well, that, that, uh, that um, according to Rabbi Yehuda, they nullify it. According to Rabbanan, don't worry about it. It's fine. Now we're talking about telemislaket. What about this sort of barrier? If the people are walking over it, do they nullify that, that sort of barrier? I mean, it's a halachic barrier. It doesn't get nullified. By people walking through it. Aliba the Rabbanan Laiti Bailach. We don't have a question according to the Rabbanan. The Rabbanan said, don't worry about it anyway. Hashtamahasam Denichatash Mishte over there that it was easy to use. It was a street. The Rabbim had a street, they just walk right through. Amri Rabbanan Laya Sirabim Vatli Machitza, the 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 Rabbanan, they argued with Rabbi, they said, Don't worry about it. It's uh, the, 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 the public doesn't do anything, even though it's a flats road, it doesn't nullify the partition. Over here, it's difficult. They have to climb up the mound and down, like Kolshkin. It's for sure less of an interruption of the mechitza. It's difficult for the rabbin to get through. They're not going to be mevatal of such a mechitza. So it's going to work. Shaila's according to Rabbi Yehuda. Does Rabbi Yehuda admit? that when there's a slight difficulty for the public to get through, that it should still be a mechitza. Over there, by the Pasibirais, there was no difficulty for the public. They walked right through, it was a regular open street. So that's why they nullified the mechitzas. But over here, it's more difficult to get over the mound. Chasimu denicha tashmishti. We say that because of the difficulty, the public doesn't nullify the mechitza, the halachic mechitza of the telemislaket, which is the mound, which is ten tefachim tzad. Amalei chayavin. He responded that chayavin. What does chayavin mean? That it's considered a rishasarabha. It means that they nullify this mechitza as well. 
even if it's so difficult to go up that you need a rope to get up this telemaslaket, will you still say that it's considered a Rishasarabim? A Malayan? He responded, yes. Even if it's so difficult, like the area of base Marin, where it was a steep cliff. Rashi quotes that we say in Nisan Atayker, we say Kivnei Marin. Kivnei Marin means that they're going in single file because that area was a steep cliff. That's the reference to Kivnei Marin. Um, the whole world goes in front of Hashem Kibnei Maran. That means they're walking single file in front of in front of God in judgment. That means even if it's such a steep cliff that you have to go. In, in it says Marain or Marain? I, I don't know. I don't know. Rashi quotes over here Kibnei Maran, as it says in Masech Rosh Hashanah. Kibnei Maran. I can remember. Uh-huh. Yeah, a lot of times it could be where the, where, which language it's using. It switches the nun. The mem. It's um, quoting an Aramaic word or a Hebrew word. So I'm lay in. He says, yes, in all of those cases, even if it's so steep, it's still considered a, it's still considered a Rosh Hashanah. Eisve, the Gemara is a question. Let's say someone has a courtyard. It's unlucky that the public just walks right through it. They walk in this side and they walk through the other side. When we learned this before, we, um, we spoke about Muncie years ago, where backyards were not really private property. <laughs> yeah, just go through from street to, to, to cut through, to, to, to get to the local show, you'd walk through someone's backyard. Okay, so this person has a public that's walking through his backyard it's considered a public domain regarding impurity. Now that rule is that whenever there's a doubt if something is impure, then it depends if it's a private domain or a public domain. And we learn this from Saita. But Saita, this the woman that's secluded with the man, if it's in a private domain, then it's assumed that she's uh, guilty. If it's a public domain, it's assumed that she's not. So that the term that's used over there is Tuma or Tara. Well, we borrow that term and we take it over to other types of tumen tara, like a, touching a sheretz or, or uh, touching a, a person that's tummy. So we say if it's in a private domain, then it's tummy. If it's in a public domain, then it's tar. So here you have someone's personal property, but the public are walking through. It's considered a public domain simply because there's people there. So by the site, they should be considered innocent. And so therefore for other tumas, it's also pure. But it's considered enclosed for Shabbos. Well, Mani, who's the author of that? Rabbi Huda the Rabbanon. Rabbi Huda by us said, it's a problem. It's considered a, it's by the Pasi Birois, it's considered a Rishos Rabban. The Rabbanon said it's a Rishos Yachid. We just said now that it's a Rishos Yachid. It sounds like the Rabbanon. If you say it's the Rabbanon, one second. I need the Rabbanon to tell me this. If in a street, it's considered a Rosh Hashayachim. Over here, it's difficult for the public to get through it. It's not a street, it's a private, someone's private property. They're basically walking through cracks in the fences. This is not so easy, or like, oh, gaps in the bush or whatever. Like Kolshkin, for sure it should be a Rosh Hashayachim. I don't need the rabbis to tell me this, Salacham. El Alav, Rabbi Yehuda, it must be that Rabbi Yehuda admits it's really Rabbi Yehuda says in a street it's a Rosh Hashanah because it's easy for them to get through. But in a Chatzar, Rabbi Yehuda would admit that it would be a Rosh Hashanah because it's not so easy for the public to get through. Yes, they're getting through, but so what? They're climbing over someone's fence. It doesn't mean that it becomes a public property. So over here, they're climbing through gaps in the fence. They're, they're, Again, it's not easy to get through. So it's so Rabbi Yehuda's Maida. That was basically our question. Will Rabbi Yehuda be Maida in this case? Umar says, no. Laylam Rabbanan, it is the rabbis. So why do they need to say it? Shas Rabban Latumat Shrikhalai. Chidish is the other side. We said two halachas here. 
Chedesh is that's considered a Rosh Rabin for impurity. It means that the person is pure. That's the side. You're right. For to say it's Rosh Hashanah for Shabbos, that's not Chedesh. Hey, Tashima, come and listen. A proof. Mavayis Rama Falashis. If you have um, a mavoi that's open in a bar, in a pit. I was going to ask, what are you talking about? <laughs> and you have a mavoi in a pit. We'll see in a sec. Or sikhan uh, are like square pits or maris or pits in, in caves, water, can, things that contain water. So Rosh Hashanah Yachad L'Shabbos, and Rosh Hashanah Rabbim for Tumah, similar to what we just said about the courtyard, where the public is walking through. Gemara says, but by yourself, what are you saying? It's in a pit? How do you have a mavi in a pit? It says, Ella Libayrus, it's open to a bar. Aha, so there's a bar on one end. It's hard to get through. You walk around the bar, whatever. Rosh Hashanah Yachad L'Shabbos, Rosh Hashanah Rabbim for Tumah. Well, it's Rosh Hashanah Yachad for Shabbos. Mani. Who's the opinion? If you say it's the Rabbanan, of course it's a Rosh Hashanah They said that a street is considered a Rosh Hashanah if it's enclosed. When it's a street where they can walk straight, that they don't nullify, that, that they don't nullify the street and they, they, they don't nullify the walls and the walls are considered, or, uh, are still there, it's considered Shusayach, even though they're able to walk through directly. It's hard, they have to walk, jump over the well, walk around the well. Like Kolshkin, for sure it's considered Shusayach. Allah Rabbi Yehuda, the Chiddush must be Rabbi Yehuda. The Rabbi Yehuda is Maida, that in this case, because of the difficulty, it's still considered Shusayach. The Quran says, Laylam Rabbanan. Really is the opinion of the rabbis. Well, so what's the Chiddush? You told me a much bigger chiddush before. You don't have to tell me this. It's the shusarabim l'tum et The chiddush is the other side of the halacha that is considered the shusarabim for impurity. Now you can ask these two uh, contradictions. Why do you have to say it twice? We just you told me the chiddush about the shusarabim l'tum twice. Yeah, that I don't know. Tashima, come in here. Come in here. Shvili base Gilgal. It's a large, uh, a high um, cliff, I guess. Kriyatsebem, and similar, the paths of Beis Gilgal. Let's see what we have in the pictures. Okay, that was our Telam Slaket, where people are walking over. Um, here, you need a rope to get through. We asked that question. Um, the, the public is walking through the gaps in the courtyard. Here we said that it's a, uh, the end of a mavoi is a bar. We said, nevertheless, it's considered Rosh Hashanah, even though the public can walk through, it's open at both ends. Here's Shvili Beis Gilgal. Okay, it's uh, some cliffs that people are walking. Uh -huh. That's what they say, you have to walk up around the mountain. Different interpretations here. Okay. So, Shkili Beis Gilgal, Kiyetzi Ben Rishos Yachad L'Shabbos Rishos Rabbam L'Tumah. The Ezo is Shkili Beis Gilgal. What is this considered? What is considered Shkili Beis Gilgal? Ami Dibay Rabbi Yanei, Kol Shein Ebed Yachalita Sosh Al Chitan V'yaretz L'Fnei Surat. Surat Yait. If an Ebed, a servant, can't take a saw of wheat and run in front of a soldier, an official, So this is considered a Rosh Hashanah. It's one of these uh, difficult passes that, uh, to get through. Mani, who's the author of this? If it's the Rabbanan, if it's in the middle of a street, it's considered Rosh Hashanah because it's enclosed. Over here, they can hardly walk through it. It's a steep incline. You're going to tell me that it's Rosh Hashanah. Of course, it's Rosh Hashanah. 
Mar says, I love Rabbi Huda. Must be Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Huda admits. It's considered a Rosh even though the public is walking through because of the difficulty. Shvili Beis Gilgal, comrade. What are you telling me? A proof from Shvili Beis Gilgal. Yeshua, Oyev Yisrael Oyev. Yeshua means Yeshua that brought us, Yeshua Ben Nun, that brought us into the land of Israel. He was a lover of the Jewish people. Oymet Betikalem Drachem Usrata. He instituted, he set up, he established paths and streets, highways, if it was an easy pass, he gave it over to the public. Now we understand this whole Gemara. The, the whole Gemara, we were waiting for this line. Rabbi Yechanan said that the difficult passes of Eretz Yisrael are considered private, uh, private property. Why? because Yeshua did not make those into, into public roads. Those he left for private, private individuals to close it off or whatever. But the, 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 what, he, what Yeshua made with the, for the public roads was easy passes. So that's why in Eretz Yisrael, those areas are considered Rosh Hashanah. Outside of Eretz Yisrael, not necessarily. Depends on whatever the, however it was set up. So you could say that Rabbi Yehuda is not really my day. You're talking be Chayev in other places. In Eretz Yisrael, it's different. The way they set it up is that those difficult passes are not considered pub- public, public roads. Okay. Let's see the next Mishnah. We quoted this Mishnah before. It says, Echad bar Rabim. Be'er Rabbim. Bar is a cistern. Be'er is a well. So the bar collects the water, and be'er is the water come comes up from from the ground. It's a spring. Be'er Yachid, or it's a well of a private person. So whether public cistern, private uh, public cistern, or public well, or even a private well, Eisen Lapasen, all of those you can make the pasim birais. And our concern was that maybe it would dry up. And, well, for the public, that's not a concern. And if it's a private well, then we're, we only use wells, not systems. But if it's a private system, that needs a real well. You know, because the heter was only for water. There's no water there, the whole thing becomes nullified. Rabbi Kiva, that's the words of Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Yudha ben Bava, Rabbi Yudha ben Bava says, Rabbi Yudha ben Bava was the one that was killed by the Romans for giving smicha. He was pierced by um, 300 spears. He says, You can only do this for a public well. He doesn't allow a public system. Any other, anything else you need to make a belt around it. Now, what that means is that you have to put up posts and wrap a string around it every three tvachim raised above. Three tvachim from the ground, another one three tvachim from that, another one three tvachim from that, and the size of the belt itself should be enough that it would equal one tefa, which would make a total of 10 tvachim. If it's not a be'er harabim, that's Rabbi and Bav is strict about this. Amar Rav Yasef, on top of Chav Gimel. Amar Rav Yehuda. Amr Shmuel. Rabbi Yisus says the name of Rabbi Yehuda, the name of Shmuel. Halachik Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava, the halachik Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava. Vam Rabbi Yisus, Vam Rabbi Yehuda ben Shmuel, the Hitcher Pasuk Beres Le Ber Maim Chaim Bolvad. Rabbi Yehuda also said, Rabbi Yisus says also in the name of Rabbi Yehuda, the name of Shmuel, that the only permissibility of Pasuk Beres is only for Ber Maim Chaim, not the uh, Seltzer, the um, for the. Uh, for a well. It has to be a well. It can't be a system. Utsricha. Now, both of those statements are the same. But you need both of those statements. Why? Yes, me Allah Rabbi the bin Bava. If we would say that Allah is like Rabbi the bin Bava, then I could have learned the Mishnah slightly different. And I wouldn't have had exactly all the information. Hava Mina, the Rabbim, I could have understood 
that Rabbi Akiva had two heterim. One heter was that you can use a cistern of the public. His other heter was that you can use a, a well of a private person. That belongs to a private person. Comes along Rabbi Ben Bava and deletes both of those. I could have thought that he was only deleting one of those. I could have thought that as long as it's the public, then it doesn't matter, even if it's a system. Why did he say Be'er? Well, he was trying to, to emphasize that it needs to be Rabin, that it can't be a Yachid. But even if it's a bar, it would be fine, even if it's a system. Because we didn't know what his emphasis was. That, that's the problem. So therefore, why the Tani Bera Rabim? Why does it say Bera Rabim if it means bar as well? Why does it say a well if it means a system? Lafukim the Rabbi Akiva. He wanted to exclude what Rabbi Akiva says about the other thing, that it can't be a Be'er Ha-Yachid. So Kamash Malan, the Lehutu Pasa Barisel, the Bera Ma'im Chaim. I need to say that no. But his point is not just that it needs to be public. It can't even be a system even if it's public. And if we would just say a second statement that says that it needs to be a well, not a system, I could have thought, well, if it's a well, it doesn't matter if it's public or private. That it needs to be public. Okay, let's see the next Mishnah. Rabbi Yudha Ben Bava also says, this Mishnah has a, a lot of opinions. <laughs> so we'll see. It's, the Gemara, like, sort of, you get it clear when you go through the Gemara, but um, we'll go through these opinions here. Rabbi Yudha ben Bava says another statement. The Gemara is going to ask right away, why do you uh, saying he says another statement? All the times, Tanaim say statement. And over here you say he says another one. Like, why don't you do that uh, every Mishnah? It says, Hagina va Karfif. Rabbi Yudha has another statement. Hagina, which is a garden, a Karfif, is an area which is enclosed for wood. Chain Shivan Mama Vishirayim al. Ayan Amma Vishirayim, which is 70 plus by 70 plus Amis. Mukafi is gathered, that they're surrounded by a wall. Oh, so far so good. Sounds like everything is good. There's a wall around it. Sounds like it's Rosh Hashayach. Kvayasar Tvachim. Metaltlin Basaycha. You can carry in it. Ubalvad Sheba Shemeira. However, only if there is some sort of guardhouse, um, a guard hut. That's there, and it means it needs to be enclosed for some sort of living, some sort of dwelling. So, if there's a shemera there, if there's a guardhouse, that's good. A base dira for a house to live in, which they smuchali Or if it's close to the city, then if someone has two properties, one he has his house, and he has another sort of like an empty property, but it's close nearby his house that he, well, maybe he goes to sit over there to relax. There's trees. Um, well, trees is going to be different. Um, so that's going to be considered enclosed for, for dwelling. Rabbi Yudai, Marathi Lohim, Bala Bar V'siyach Amara, Metaltam V'siyach Rabbi Yehuda, it's not Rabbi Yehuda Ben Baba, Rabbi, Stam Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Lai. He says, even if there's water in there, that's enough. Why? Because water is what uh, you need for, for living. People can drink that. That's good. Rabbi Kiva, Marathi Lohim, Bala Achas Mikole, Rabbi Kiva says, it doesn't mean you don't need anything. Inside it, we taught them the seichel blad she shiv mam shemal shiv mam shirayim. Just don't make it too large. You don't need anything inside it. An enclosure is fine. It's considered shosiyachet. You don't need anything inside a country of Akiva. It just can't be too large. According to the others, even if it's not too large, even if it's small, it needs to have some sort of dwelling that's enclosing it. Rabbi Eliezer Eimer, in Ma'isa Arka Yisrael al Rachva Filo Ama Achasin Metaltim Maseicha. It's not a square. Even if it's one ama longer in its length and its width, you can't carry there. It needs to be a perfect square. You can get a perfect square. Um, I, I didn't measure that exactly. At what point is it considered? Rabbi uh, Yisim, I feel the Arka Pishnayim Barach Mutaltam Masech. Rabbi says, nah. Even if it's double its length, then it's width, it's fine. 
Amr Rabbi Loi Shemati Mir Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Loi says, I heard from Rabbi Lazar, possibly Rabbi Lazar. Afilo Ika Beiskor. Even if it's very, very large. So isn't Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Kiva the same? Um, after seeing the Gemara, Rabbi Yaki, they're, they're emphasizing two different things here. Rabbi yes, Akiva said it didn't matter. It didn't matter as long as it had oh. that size. And he's saying, yeah, it doesn't Until matter. Until it had that size. Right. But Rabbi Akiva didn't, was, it. didn't mention the squareness of it or the rectangle. He, Rabbi Akiva was just negating that it doesn't need to be hook of Fladira if it's smaller than that. Rabbi Yaki is saying he's arguing about if it could be a... Uh, a square or a rectangle. I'm Rabbi Loi Shemati Mir Rabbi Lazar. I feel like base core, even if it's very very large. Base core core is thirty sa. The chink Shemati Mir Anchi Chatzur Shakach Echad Mir Vleiyiv. Let's say you have a courtyard. Everyone contributed. Sounds like the people not paying the eruv bill. Um, you have a courtyard. Everyone contributed to the to the eruv, except one guy forgot to. There's a huge problem here because you have one person there that's not part of the, the family and uh, he'll, he'll ruin the whole area. So what they do is like this. They have him nullify his, his possession of the general area. Nullify your possession. That means they give it up. Not his own house, but give up your ownership to the general area. Now everyone can carry in the general area. What about his house? Can they carry into it from in and out of his house? So he said like this, basically. Crown Heights, it happens all the time. There's always one family who just. In apartment buildings. Uh, happens all the time. Exactly that case, but one family uh -huh. that's negated. Uh -huh. So over here we're saying, also, for him, he can't take in and out of his house because he just gave up his property in the public area. And he didn't, he's not part of that, that group, so he can't take from his house into the public area. But they can go into his house and they all own the public area and they can take things out of his house and bring it into the public area. I don't know, maybe he wants to sit down or something. Another thing I heard from Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Lazar, that you yoitze with our kabbalin. It's a type of mara from Pesach. The Chazart Yal Kol Talmidov, and I went around, I looked for all the students, Bikash Li Chover. I tried to find someone that could support me in these three statements. Lei Matzasi, I wasn't able to find. The Gemara Pesachim has some other um, things that's possibly found for some of them. Okay. My Tana Dektani Va'oid. Why does it say Va'oid? That's the first. And also, what's the also? Maybe he was strict before. And also, he's strict over here. What was he strict about before? Before he was strict about, it says it needs to be a public well. It can't be a cistern and it can't be a private well. Well, and now he comes along and he says, it needs to be hook of Sladira. It needs to be some sort of dwelling in this. So he's strict about two things. That's why it says also. What about Rabbi Yehuda in the case before? Rabbi Yehuda, not Rabbi Yehuda ben Baba. Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lai, he said that you can only um, make a pasi brais up to a base, uh, a base of sayin. Tusa. Can't be larger than that. And the rabbis argue. Uktani achriti. And then he has another chumra. He says that if the rabbin is walking through it, you have to move it to the side. He's machmer about two things. Why didn't we say, why didn't we say, Rabbi Yehuda? Rabbi Yehuda Aymer could have said, Vaidam in the last mission that we learned this morning. I mean, the first mission that we learned this morning, last, the previous mission. We um, could have said, Vaid. Gemara says, no. Hasam afskur rabbanan, hachalai afskur rabbanan. Well, the rabbis interrupted him over there. They argued, so that's why it doesn't say Vaid. If the rabbis interrupt, it doesn't say va'id. Then we quote from a Mishnah in Sukkah. For Rabbi Leza, the Sukkah, the Rabbi va'id. Over there in Sukkah, Rabbi Leza made one statement about uh, eating 14 meals on, uh, over Sukkah. 
And then he made another statement that you're allowed to uh, make, that you have to make up a meal if you missed one. And the rabbis interrupted him. It says, Rabbi So Hassan bin Milsudavsky over here, they interrupted him with the same topic. Over here by Rabbi Huda, they interrupted him by saying a story about a chatzar and Gina and a karfif that over there, there's an issue of a base of Siam, but not in a passage he wrote. They interrupted with another topic, so it doesn't say by. Uh, 